What's going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do my MMA Corner number 7 video. I've um, got a couple topics to run over. Um, first topic that was sent to me was from LucasD213 about the Tough Series and what it really has done for MMA in general and, you know, what can UFC continue to give um, contracts at the six-figure salary. Um, you know, the Ultimate Fighter originally, you know, the first fight that really a lot of people go back to and the first fight that I think I can go back to is Stefan Bonner, Forrest Griffin won. And that fight really did set the tone at that time for a lot of newer MMA fans coming in and got them more interested into the sport. And it helped, I think, really build um, a lot of the fans into the UFC. And then a lot of those fans in the UFC branched out to other organizations, which is really what you have to do. Um, but, I mean, yeah, this is this has done a lot. This series has done a lot for the sport of mixed martial arts. Um, and as far as the six-figure contracts, if the UFC keeps getting these, these buys continuously and they keep going up and up and up, um, then yeah, they could continue giving out salaries like that. Um, but, you know, not to get into a whole salary debate, but, you know, you got to remember that the UFC is only giving a fraction of what they make off of a pay-per-view to the fighters. So, you know, the, the contracts, I think, are kind of... a a mute point at this point because the UFC really isn't tapping into the potential of the money that they're receiving. And that's a, another argument for another day. Um, but, yes, this series has done a lot, I think, for the sport of mixed martial arts. And you may not, you know, you may not agree with the show primarily with some of the things that are on there, but for a casual fan, um, this does present an entry point into the sport of mixed martial arts. So, um, yes, Tough is, has done a lot for the sport. Um, Curse C Level 3 wanted me to talk about Matt Lidlin and him coming out talking about the contracts being illegal with the UFC. And what I, I told him, and what I'm going to be very careful about here is because I'm not... I you, you can't really judge on something when you haven't read between the lines, you haven't read the black and white, and you haven't essentially fully understood what Matt Lillard's talking about. Now, from a legal standpoint, what he's talking about is somewhat true. You can't have someone tell you that is a an owner and a promoter of a fight tell you what fights you're going to have and what you can't have, because that's what essentially your manager does. And Dana White isn't anyone's manager in the UFC for most of these fighters. So, you know, part of that's true, and then again, who am I or who is anyone else to say that they're illegal when we don't really know what the black and white terminology is? Now, Matt Lillen's been there, and Matt Lillen's, you know, done the UFC um, tango several times, and is probably well aware of what the contracts are and what is required of a contract, and, you know, he's probably gotten much legal advice from his attorneys. But... I think it's too quick to jump on something like this without getting the full fact base behind it. And again, like I said, I see where Matt Lillen's coming from and I understand the, the points which he makes solid points and they're true. But then again, how do I know or how does anyone know what's written in the contract? What if it's stipulated in the contract that if you sign this contract, you, you give us the rights to, and there's a stipulation there. I mean, if that's written in, and you sign it, and you agree to those terms and conditions as long as they're not completely overbearing on the recipient, then generally you're locked into a contract like that. So, you know, unless the legal system deems otherwise, it's going to be kind of hard for anyone to really sit there and say that, that contract's illegal. But then again, like I said, he makes valid points. So we'll have to see when more facts come out to really make a solid judgment on that. And, you know, that's really where I stand on that, that topic right now. Um, Rich uh, Hobo 53 wanted me to talk about Anderson Silva and Leona Machida, how well they match up. And you know, I didn't talk about Anderson Silva in my Machida video. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, but the reason is because Anderson Silva is primarily not a 205 um, guy. He's not a light heavyweight, and he fights at middleweight. So I really didn't throw him into that mix. But if you start seeing Anderson Silva making a splash, and that fight does come up. Anderson Silva matches up very well with Leo Machida, and he is a guy that can present problems, just as much as Rampage, just as much as Vanderlei, just as much as Dan Henderson, like I mentioned in my other video. Um, you know, I think Anderson 
does a very good job of cutting angles down, which Leota does do a, a good job of that. That's primarily with his footwork. He likes to use angles to retreat and escape and get set back into another um, comfortable area. But Anderson does present those problems of cutting the angles down, getting Leoto in the clinch where I think, like I've said in my video, Leoto is deficient and is a little overrated in his clinch game that Anderson could probably exploit that and probably could, could beat him. Um, and is the guy, probably one of the few guys that could outstrike Machida as well. So Anderson has, is a very good matchup for Leoto. And actually, in that fight, I would pick Anderson Silva, to be perfectly honest. I think that he would have the better of the clinch. I think he had the, would have the better of the striking combinations. And for every elusive point that Machida tries to, to move, Anderson's going to cut the angle down and is going to capitalize on every single minor mistake, which is what he does. I mean, that's what Anderson is so good at. He catches you with the mistakes that you make, the simple mistakes, just like with Marquardt, catching Marquardt off of that wrestler switch. You know, I mean, that's, that's what Anderson Silva does, so... Um, uh, those were the topics that I got for this MMA Corner video. Leave me some comments, um, some ideas for my next MMA Corner video. And uh, on that note, you guys, have a great day.